This podcast is sponsored by the Ren Bear, the top venue for your team's events, parties, or barbecues. Message the Ren Bear on social media to book in your team. So, joined again by Jeff Linsky for another edition of the Senior and Intermediate Power Rankings. Uh, we're safely coming out to the knockout stages in both stages of the competition. Safety, Jeff, overall, the hardest championship we've had so far, it's it's been a great championship. Yeah, it's a lot of games, um, particularly in the Senior A, uh, the game last night, Casa Gare. And Crockwell, you know, was a really high standard. Um, the games the weekend, you know, Thomas's and uh, Turlock Moore, um, you know, it, it was quite high. And obviously, there's Rahan Nassar's was game. But look, all in all, Paul's been a an, an very enjoyable championship. Um, some shocks along the way. But my calling against Cappy game was a, was a huge one uh, at the weekend and put them back into the championship again. Just before we do uh, get into the power rankings, just interested to get your own view, obviously, on what happened the weekend between Johnny Glynn and Darren Morrissey. Obviously, it's not pretty, the backlash that's being directed towards even Johnny Glynn on social media because it did happen on the pitch. You don't like this following into players' lives, but overall, the incident isn't pretty. Um, and look, I thought the referee probably did his utmost to find out exactly what went on. Um, look, Johnny, it's, it's all a character for him, really. Um, and it, it looked very unsavoury. Um, I've never seen something like that in the Harlem pitch in my life. Um, and you don't want to see it ever again. Um, because it was a my son on the ground, I wouldn't be fairly happy uh, with what went on. But look, um, it's, it's it's tried by social media now and, and people get crucified uh, on social media and it's it's easy for the keyboard warriors but look that, in, that incident was unsavoury um, to say the least um, thankfully Darren is okay uh, he was back in college on Monday I was told um, Sars has got the result they needed but look at the end of the day it's it's someone's life that's on the ground there and we just need to be careful and mindful because we all have a duty of care as players and managers when we send teams out uh, they behave accordingly just with as well, Connor Quinlan, um, the official. I know he was getting a bit of abuse on social media, and I don't understand it because he did everything in his power there. Like it's actually, it's a very hard incident to see. You can imagine if you're a referee or even a linesman or an umpire in that situation. Like we all have the playbacks on TG Carr, but it's actually a very hard incident to see when you see all the players around it. Yeah, look, uh, I think Connor consulted with his umpires um, and his linesmen. And he need to be guided by them. Um, so look, he took the action that he thought he saw fit. If he didn't see it, you can't say you can't send somebody off. Um, so look, will he put something in the report afterwards? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so like he, he has dealt with it. There's, there's a rule there. Um, he's given a yellow a yellow card. Um, it's not like other sports where they can be cited, like in rugby, um, and 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 they overturn the referee. Um, but look, I, I thought Connor did the utmost he possibly could probably do at that time. Um, he didn't, he couldn't, you can't go to VAR, you can't go on a telly and check uh, what went on, what happened. And thankfully, look, Darren is okay, and that's the most important thing. For sure. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what happens there, but we, we can't even predict what's going to happen. It's now between GA and the CCC and the referee's report and to see what happens there. So um, we won't comment on any more further on that. But just if we're getting into the power rankings here, we'll start with the Senior Hurling Championship. I presume you can see it there anyways. But um, it's 1-8, to eight, so uh, Thomas is in first, Lockeray second, Ormore Mary, uh, they're up five places in third. Castlegar up five places after their win over Crockwell last night, which seen them be one of the group winners. They're in fourth place. Sarsfields up one place after their victory over Ardran. Clare Bridge made hard work out of Tommy Larkins, but uh, in the end got over the line and are up uh, one place in sixth place. Turnock Moore, safe to say, narrowly uh, defeated T St. Thomas at the weekend. They're down two places. And Ardran just coming up short against Sarsfields. They're down four places. On first and second, even going by the weekend, yeah, they're look, still ahead. 
Yeah, Thomas is there still ahead of the chase and pack. Um, Lockray are in far behind. I think Ord Moore probably everyone's shocked, but look, I, I had a good look at them against Climber Daly. No, Climber Daly were wasteful. I'd say there was three goals, if not four goals, missed in total, and a couple with a few uh, really good chances for playing from freeze. Uh, Climber Daly really kicking themselves, but. Or more an up-and-coming team, Paul, um, in mm. terms of how they're playing the game, they're using the ball well. Physically, they've developed at a huge rate over the last two years. And look, Mike Burke has come off the last two the two games. So they've got four weeks now to get their house in order, particularly for an island. If it's, if it's a hamstring injury, it'll give them a chance to, to get that sorted. Um, Casagar, after the comments that were made, um, they fairly reacted. <laughs> they fairly reacted over the last couple of weeks. You probably need to get Brady on again to make a few more comments, and you might see them in a county final. Um, but yeah, look. In fairness to them, the last two games have been super. I think they were eleven down last night and nine down. Um, Sarsfields bounced back against Ardran, and against again Ardran were quite wasteful. Uh, particularly the last fifteen minutes, they, they butchered two if not three goal chances, and they'd be kicking themselves. Clem Bridge are probably the day the, the, the dangerous ones in terms of the players coming back now. You know, Brian was back at the weekend, Oshin Salmon was back at the weekend. Um, so they'd be strengthening their back line. Um, and they could be timing their run um over the next two weeks, but we'll know in two weeks' time with the prelims. Um Turlock Moore, if the offload uh, from feeling was given to Kevin Hussey, it it could have been a different game completely. Um was unlucky. Evan Duggan got a great flick in um at that stage and the game was in the middle pot. But like you, you just have to admire St. Thomas's in terms of how they're playing the game at present. Um and Ardran, they'll be disappointed with the three point loss against Arsenal. So you mentioned there obviously Thomas isn't not great. Can you see anyone catching them? Or are they like what do they have that's why well, they're ahead of the rest at the minute? Up top, uh, Paul, um, their defense, you know, as well. Marshall, you Finton, Burke, full back. Uh, Shane Cooney's going fairly well at that six now. Um, he's discovered his own form. Um, like he's his movement is an off the better. Um, he's very powerful looking at present at six for 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 them. And then you have Key and Manny coming back as well. Um, for Lock Ray, obviously, Paul Huben and Johnny Cohen in the central positions. And up top, Martin Mack is coming back. So look, both of them, yeah, you see ahead of the pack. But on any given day, Turlock Moore, Clem Bridge and Sarsfield and possibly Castigar could cause uh, Lockery and Thomas is in tight pitches. Um, you know, because Athenry is now gone. And if these games, if the weather turns and it's on in, in, in Duggan Park, our guard is obviously a fairly big pitch. It, nothing could happen uh, on them given days and the score the next place of Jura Fair 16 points last night it's, it's an unbelievable return really at 40 years of age Is Jura Fair one of the best hurlers you've seen in the Gold Club Championship? Um, played against them um, yeah look I still think in 2012 um, was it 2012 yeah um, where they drawn the first game I think Earl Lieutenant got a chance out near the side and off his left. And I, I always I was first coming back on the train after it's kind of going. If Ger was there on that ball off his left hand side, um I would I I put my house on on him scored and I thought he was cut too early in his career, uh, in terms of how he took his scored and his distribution, his knowledge of the game. Um and it's like it's unbelievable to see, I suppose, him and Earl Lieutenant still Still, you know, leading uh, both their club teams and still having the hunger and getting their bodies in shape and no injuries. Now, look, Tan is probably moving a bit better than Jur, but Jur's timing um, and knowing where to be at, at any given time um, on the pitch is, is a joy to watch. Um, but yeah, look, by all accounts, I would love to go over to it now to watch it last night. Um, by all accounts, from from the radio, I was listening to the last twenty twenty five minutes on the radio, and from the sounds of the two lads in the radio, it was a fairly exciting game. Yeah, for sure, probably the game of the championship. Just when you mentioned or more, they're building there. Can they win the Tom Callan this year? Do you feel? Uh, probably too early for them. Like you've you've Rory Burke now is leading uh, the light in terms of freeze. 
Uh, Patrick Burke got three points the last day. Anthony Keady is the lad's catch my eye because, look, he's quick. He's moving fairly well. Ruben Davis getting a few few scores with him. Garage Mack is holding down three. Anna Burke's at, or sorry, at six. Anna Burke's at three. Owen Gurgi's doing a good job back there as well. Um, so they're, they're peppered with lads who have a lot of experience. But it's the size of them, Paul, for me. Um, and with the few more hurlers we're going to have coming, uh, over the next two or three years and um, with the work that's been done underage um, they're getting to minor A finals they're getting under 21 finals semi-finals and they're building and if they keep those caliber players coming over the next five or six years um, yeah definitely they're they're going to be up there in the top probably three or four teams over the next uh, seven, eight years definitely It's fantastic yeah you mentioned it there obviously um, but what have they done this year compared to other years because they always seem to kind of so I'd no. comments, I, yeah, I'd say the comments probably stung them, Paul. Um, Do you think so? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say so. Like that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't uh, have gone down well. I would say inside. I said it wouldn't gone down well inside any club team. Um, but comments are made like that about you, and uh, you would get a reaction. Um, like the the game against Sarsfields in particular, you know, there was a hunger and a desire there uh, from them. Now, look, the body of the hurling wasn't great the first 20, 25 minutes. Um, but by all accounts last night, you know, the super it was a super game of hurling. Um it, it'll be interesting to see the momentum these teams have got over the, this weekend. Um they will probably carry you through onto the next round. Um and you you would give Castles Gare a, a really, really good chance uh, in the next round. Like defensively they're they're sound, uh, they've they've Obviously, Jura around the middle, and then look, they're, they're forwards that they have between Killian O'Callaghan, you know, Oshin Connolly, Jur, um, Jack Hine. Um, yeah, Greg Thomas got 1 3 last night, you know, and Greg was brought out and won every puck out uh, in the second half, you know. So they're obviously playing for each other and they've got a hunger. Um, and obviously, they've sorted out stuff internally themselves in terms of behaviours and habits off on and off the field. And uh yeah, you you'd 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 put them up there and you wouldn't you wouldn't doubt you wouldn't be surprised, Paul, if they got to a bonus semi final this year. Yeah, absolutely. The world's oyster now really when they top that group. Just on Sarge's coverage and Turlock, they were kinda of in the one category when we started off these power rankings to find themselves further down uh the table in fifth, sixth and seventh. That's probably just on current form. I do get the sense that you feel that Sarsfield, Cambridge, and Turlock can still challenge. Yeah, look, I still see them um, being at the, the latter end of the competition. It's, it's like at you know, these are seasoned, they're seasoned guys there within uh, those camps, and they will get the, the job done and they will be able to get themselves up on any given day. And because they have a break, so they have the prelims in two weeks' time. Is the quarterfinals in the following week? Is there actually there's another gap after that again? Yeah, because it's four it's weeks. Four football, yeah, it's football. So it gives teams a huge opportunity to recover and to get injured lads back. So look, Turlock Moore, Kevin Hussey back uh, the last day. Um, I don't know where Jamie Holland is. I don't know if Sean Loft is going to make it back for a county semi final or not. Um, but like they they have they have one or two lads uh, due to come back. Clare and Bridge are very very similar as well in terms of you know Brian was back pushing Simon. I'm not too sure where Christy Bannon's at in terms of his injury. Um, and look, Evan shot the lights out uh, again the last day. They probably need more from Keen Simon and Mark Kennedy inside, uh, especially. Do Irish find themselves in eight because it was a missed opportunity at the weekend? Yeah, um, yeah, they, they, they had an opportunity to pick the last 10 15 minutes, and it was just a conversion rate that, that, that let them down. Um, could have got a penalty at the end, um, could have been a penalty, um, but there was a there was a, a good few chances that they had. Uh, Jason Kennedy had a free before the one uh, that he missed, um, you know, so they, they'll be kicking themselves, especially, you know, with the amount of work they had done. In the earlier rounds, not to get a result against Ardran to give them to, or against Sarsfields to give themselves a, a chance of, of a four week break. 
So we'll just move on to the second half of the table now, 9 to 16. So Farmer Daly down five places in ninth, Gort up two places into 10th, Capitagal remain 11th, Mike Cullen up four places in 12th, Cropwell down three places after their defeat to Castle Gare last night, Tommy Larkins remain were there, um, Kilken Iron, who were probably looking at a preliminary quarter final now in relegation, they're down two places in 15th, and Portumna down one place in 16th. Uh, Climber Daly, you mentioned it there, conversion rate. Um, is it similar to Ardran as well? Missed opportunity. Yeah, they, they had, uh, I think Paul Craven had three chances. Um, they had three, like they weren't even strikes on the run. They were they were standing strikes um, that should have been converted. Brian Burke had probably two frees. Bino had one shot from play. Jack Fitz had an offload in the second half. They should have gone to hand. Um so like they have Cappy in the next round, so that's a local local enough. Climber have uh, Sarsfields. Sarsfields, sorry, Gorton Cappy. Gorton Cappy and and Climber Sarsfield. So like, um, yeah, local derby yet and can happen there. Um, Gorton Gort be fairly happy with that draw against Cappy Tiger. I don't know what went on there at the weekend because look, um, that was obviously shock at the weekend. Um, but look, Sarsfields Climber Daily. You'd be kind of looking at it from the point of view if Climber Daly bring the same energy and work rate and convert their chances, they'll trouble anybody. Um, they will be able to match Sarsfields in a lot of lot of positions. Um, I think if if Sarsfields get a dry day, they're very very difficult to beat. Um, Alex Kinnear has probably his best game of the championship today. He won three from forward. Ian Fox as a centre forward was very effective inside. Obviously, Kevin did his bit, um, but yeah, look, that that they're they're going to be interesting ties, Paul, um, especially the the Climber Daily and Sarsfields game. Cork are up too, and it's probably because there's momentum behind them now. Yeah, look, um, put up a huge score. I think Jason Greenish got f- five, or was a six at the weekend from midfield. Um, probably suits him in Lockeray, in fairness. Um, but uh, he'll, he'll be fitter in the next two weeks. I'm sure Jack and the boys will get on to him. Um, but like, that's serious scoring uh, for anyone uh, in midfield. Paddy Cummins had six from play as well. I think one free. Um, Richie got three goals. Richie Cummins, you know, so he, like you've been wait- I've been waiting for him to fire in the championship today. He produced the goals the last day, but he's going to need to do it again. But Cappy will be on their guard because two years ago, uh, in the stadium, wasn't it? That that guard caught them that day. Um. So look, I, I I'd be expecting Cappy to bounce back. Um. What's happening there, Dimash? I think we've ref- referenced it. At, I just think the with the forwards that they have, um, the 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 their style of player, their ball usage, like Lean Collins isn't scoring the rate he was last year. Um, they're probably not building the play enough and probably not delivering the ball from the right zones. Um, they're still look. They're short, obviously. Paul Claffey, um, you know as well, you know, which 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 is a big loss. Um, but they look, Paul. They could turn around the next day and uh, get a result against Gort, and all of a sudden they're in the quarter final, and they could trouble trouble any 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 given day, and we'd have all egg on our faces. Then they're back in the county semi final again. You still think they can turn around? I think they could turn around against Scorcha, yeah. whether they're they're have enough players uh, in a quarter final, it depends what they get. You know, it depends what they get. If it's if it's Loch Reagan, it's a local derby, it's on a banner slow wet day, it's a different different type of game. Um if it's Thomas's you'd, you'd be fancying Thomas's, they'll probably fancy their chances against uh Casa Gar um or or, or Ord Moore. But look, the tough two and the rest of the chase and pack after that, um, you'd be still fairly confident on Sarsfield's clear and bridge and Turlock Moore getting through. Just then 12, Mike Cullen up four places and deservedly so. Um, they deserve massive credit because they were hammered to by Lockery first round. Then Kilken Iron, I'm sure uh, there's a lot of questions among players and management where the season was going to go, but like remarkably they've they've turned this around. Yeah, look, and I thought they were the standout team in the championship last year. Um, like Melos played them, 
Um, like a lot of the young lads that they're inside in uh, University of Galway, so I, I have a good idea of, of an awful lot of them. They have a lot of hurlers. Um, did did it surprise it probably surprised everyone at the weekend in terms of where they were coming from? Um, but look again, they're they're a dangerous team now. Um, you know, for anybody, Phil McDonough came on the last day. Um, Colin Cunningham got a few scores. Um, James Bradley was 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 obviously scoring heavy from freeze and a bit from play. So look, they're a dangerous team. You know, um, the monkeys off the back now with that win, and now they're in bonus territory. So then just 13, 14, 15 to 16th. Um, so Crowell are playing Kil- Kilkenny and Tommy Larkins are playing Port Dunman to two relegation semi-finals. But 13th, Crowell down three places. Tommy Larkins were around there. Kilkenny are down two places. And Port Dunman down one place. Do you see Crowell and Tommy Larkins having too much in their relegation semi-finals? Is that why they're in 13 to 14? I looked the Crowell were probably... The probably most disappointed uh, after the weekend. Like Tommies have had their injuries this year. Kick and Iron did not score enough against uh, Mike Cullen inside the stadium. Like by all the counts, they were 13 14 points up. Um, you know, so like when the scoring difference was coming into play between the three teams, um, you, you really had to convert and put up a really high score. Um, Rockwell. You know, 13 up last night, 9 up in the second half. They'll be fairly disappointed from where they've come from uh, to where they are now because they're obviously they put a huge effort into the championships here. I've played really good hurling um, and now they're caught in a relegation. Uh, the only thing is they're, they're not out this weekend. It just gives them a chance to recover. And relegation's a battle, Paul. Um, it's a battle. And these four teams... Um, especially, you know, you'd be kind of looking at the Canary and are probably up and coming in terms of the teams that have come through the regular under 16 team. Um, for Tumna, you know, will will they find something to stave off for relegation? Is, is is another is another question they have to find for themselves in, in two weeks time. Do you see Port Tumna going down to senior B at the minute? Um, but based on sure. Saying Mike Cullen were 16th uh, two weeks ago. Mm. This can change fairly quick, you know. Um, Andy Smith was back the last day. Um, if Joe and Jack fire up top at Declan McLaughlin, you know, they'll trouble anybody, uh, Paul. And look, it's going to be probably conditions in September have really been good. So it's not going to be traditional, really wet pitches and a wet ball. Um, ben Stowe's in good nick. Uh, New Wins in good nick. Garter's in good nick. You know, so like these be, <laughs> they're all kind of local derbies in one way, and it sometimes it's a flick of a coin uh, to see who comes out. So we'll just move on now. Uh, senior B, there's not supposed to be plus three games. Like, well, yeah, they're obviously remaining first, um, second, Kennedy, Medina, Kennedy, 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 he actually finally got a text from a Port Pierce's supporter over the weekend. Said we weren't giving them enough credit, but they got their first win, so they're up um, two places. Um, they had, they're down one place in sixth. Uh, Climber down uh, one place in seventh and eighth uh, at the right. Just before we come to Mullia, because Kilnadima were the live game uh, at the weekend on Goal GATV. For senior B and like jump it out for me already, I'd be quite surprised if they don't end up in a final because they're they're playing some hurling as a match. Yeah, I watched the game, Paul. It was my first chance to get a look at them. Um, they have scored in forwards. So in senior B, if you have scored in forwards and Brian Malai, Connor Malai, Mikey Lynch, um, you know they're going to they're going to rack up big big scores. Um. Is Mikey Lynch someone who enters the goal in conversation now? But Mikey had a really good four years with us in the college. That would have been probably three years ago at this stage. Um, was County Minor um, in 15 um, and 16. You know, so, yeah, possibly. Um, possibly. Um, but, like, th- there's a big difference between senior B and senior A. Mm, um, yeah. Big, big, big difference. Um, Colum got whatever it won 
was it one four one five the last day? I think one five he finished. Yeah, one four one five. Um, delighted to see Conor Malay back. Um, tapped over a few frees. Um, Adam Nolan was solid enough. Um, his play was a bit loose at times and some certain balls. Tom Tierney. I'm not too sure where Jack Kenny was playing. Actually, he was the one I was kind of looking at, kind of going, "Where is he here on on the pitch? Was he sitting, a sitting six or playing midfield? Uh, I wasn't too sure." And Joe Gantley was was forty one, got six points from play, uh, which was incredible. The sad part of that game really was was Dahi Kane's injury and look, my heart yeah, was out uh, to him and to the family, you know. And hopefully he, he recovers, you know, because he, he's a bright future ahead of him. Are Mullion Kiladima? Would like would you be surprised if they're not to end up in the final? Day? Based on consistency, yeah, definitely. Um, Hasper, obviously, you know, I said it from the outset in terms of they got themselves organized this year. Um, Mellows will have a take a look at themselves uh, in terms of their own performance levels and trying to find some consistency in what they're doing. Um, left it behind them the last day. Um, and obviously, the, the Pierce is coming. Um, Pierce is, you know, had man sent off, but had two. Um, and they found something and, and got the win. Um, they, from the battle that they had last year in Loch is going to be interesting uh, this game in two weeks' time. Um, but look, it's still all to play for Paul. Any of these uh, teams on any given day uh, can do each other. You know, you have a few local derbies that could happen again. Um, so look, out of the top five, any, anybody could, could cause an upset and anyone could win that senior league. Just on that, uh, nearly similar to Kilken Iron, it's nearly what happened to Climber over the weekend. And from the outset, when we looked at Senior B, you said that Climber were a team that you feel could do something here. But now, like, Climber are in serious danger. Like, they're playing Athena and anything can happen here. And, like, they don't want to be the yo-yo team that, like, came up and go straight back down. Yeah, and... Um... You know, we, we were playing them last Christmas before the the Peter Intermediate semi final. Um, in terms of where they were at this time last year, and now, um, I, I thought to be further up. And obviously, look, they 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 be disappointed themselves where they're at. Um, but there's no better management, you know, to get themselves organised. For and Roy, um, the fleet after Roy and Meadows up the top, one and two. <laughs> You know what the start of this, and look where the both of them are. Um, but like it, it, it's no coincidence the teams that got themselves organised fairly early at the start of the year in terms of their management team. Um, Mully in particular with Hardy back, Tony Ward's there second year. John Madden is in with a Hasker phone. These are all experienced uh, guys in terms of team preparation. Um, so I'm not shocked really to kind of as the championship progresses to see where they're at. And Mully have a uh, They've been scoring well. They've been getting goals. A young Dolphin there got another. Did you get another two the last day? Um, yeah. You know, so like, he's a guy you'd be kind of looking out for to say where he where he's going to be at over the next year or two, um, particularly with, with going under 20s uh, under his belt. Um, a Haskrat, look with, with the two Mannions. Uh, Sean Blaine, Mark Kelly's is stepping over the freeze. Um, they've obviously proved a huge amount uh, from last year. Just before we do move on to the intermediate then, uh, the prelim draw was made and uh, the prelim quarterfinal draw is Abby Nakmoy versus Aldrin, uh, Kinvara versus Ballygar, Clarenbridge second team versus Anna Down, and Karen Moore versus Kiltormer. And the relegation sees Turnup Moore against uh, Kilbacency and Spiddle against Crawwell um, in the relegation. Tina obviously still in first, but a bit of a surprise to see them draw at the weekend with Ballandrine, considering they've been so far ahead of every other team. I'm, I'm not too sure. What Did they change the team or just rest that? Was it a surprise? Yeah, obviously. But look, they, they, they were top of the group. Um, They were probably taking a look at three or four lads on the panel and probably gave their, their top guys uh, a break or else took them off early. But look, fair play to Ballandrine for getting the results. Um, Abby put up a huge performance against me, like Eric Court now. 
Yeah, um, two points was, in injury time for me to win. Yeah, and that was our Paul Farty playing as well, you know. So, like, have a team as well when they get a bit of momentum. Um, Anton can Anton can happen. Um, but you still be fancying Tina and Milik, Rahun and Cylon. Hardmore and Kinbara are, are, are danger teams also uh, on any given day. But look, Paul, I'd say outside the top one, the next next seven teams, uh, Anton is possible with the them pretty limited quarter final. Yes, just on that one take, because I've got to say Tina first, Milik second, Rahun third. Cylon fourth up one place, Ballandrine up three places uh, after their draw, Avinok Mona down two, Kinvera down one, and uh, Karamora down one. That's just up to the movement there from Cylon and Ballandrine why them teams have ended up um, down the way. But you still think there anything can happen between the seven Bear Bertina, really? Yeah. Um, you're just looking at the quality of players that Tina have at their disposal and the balance they have. Um, particularly from you know Paul being back, uh, Park Brenny, Shane Maloney, uh, young power there as well, you know, and David Jordan and Ben Morden. They're peppered with a lot of players who played uh, County Hurling, especially, you know. Um, so look, it, it's going to be an interesting championship. Matty and, and Haji won't want to get caught, um, and that's probably what they're trying to safeguard. So obviously, they're not going to talk about them, they've put up uh, serious scores. They probably have a stick note to beat the players with after the Ballandurian game, and that will suit them perfectly over the next couple of weeks. So then just from 9-16th, Clambridge are up uh, one place. Um, they're obviously getting second in their group. Um, Ballygare uh, up one place after their big win over Crockwell, and down, down two places after their defeat to Karen Moore. Uh, Kiltorma rescued um, away from relegation, and they're up three places in 12th. Um, Turlock, um, they're down one place. Um, and obviously, from 13 to 16, you have all these teams in relegation. Kilbegan, they're down one place uh, after their defeat to Rahoon, and Cromwell down one place after their defeat to Padigar, and Spill still remain in 16th, um, winless so far in the championship. Just from 9 to 12, um, because they're going to be teams entering the preliminary uh, quarterfinals and obviously have added down in Clare and Bridge who are going to face each other there between 9th and 11th but can they still challenge teams like outside of the top one or two? Um, I, I, outside the top one Paul I'd say look there's very little um, like all them games last weekend you had the Anna Down card more game um the Belly Gar hockey game was tonight. How did that, that obviously Belly Gar won that by how much? Uh, yeah, 222 to 17. Okay, so like Belly Gar have been unlucky in a, in a lot of the games. And look, there's not much between any of these teams if 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 they stay injury free and, and convert uh, their sporting chances um, and, and come really tuned in and really, really well prepared and ready for battle. Any of these teams can cause an upset on any given day. Just then you have 13th, 16th, uh, Turlock, Kilbacanty, Crockwell and Spittle. Uh, so obviously you have the two semi-finals there, but it's, it's funnily enough here, you actually have 13th versus 14th, 15th versus 16th. Yeah. Um, Crockwell obviously came up from junior A two years ago. Um, who do you look who would you fancy here? Um, or the Turlock Moor, Kilbacanty? I would probably go for Turlock Moor and all the Crockwell and Spittle. I'd probably go for Crockwell with the win and then obviously Kilbacanty Spittle playing off um, for Junior A Hurling. Um, but look, it, it's it's a difficult scenario for them four clubs uh, over the next couple of weeks. Um, people now tune in and focus. Um, Kilbacanty are probably fairly batting hard and, this, and as are Spittle and are fairly used to it. Um, but look, um, disappointing for them, um, but they have a job to do over the next two weeks. Yeah, so uh, just a break this week from the hurling. Um, it's a football weekend, and then we'll have some hurling resuming again. Um, but as the relegation works, it's the two losing teams from the semi-final play in the final, and it's one down, one up. That's across the board this year in um, the senior and intermediate hurling championships. That's all on our power rankings uh, for today.